It's led names from the most recent snowmobile history, like Indy, ZRT, and VMAX have come and gone and in some cases come back again. But there's one name that's been there throughout these changes, and it's Skidoo's MXZ. Okay, I know MXZ, MXZ, I'm a Canadian, I should be saying Z, but I mean, it is what it is. And I always call these things MXZs or Mach Zs in the day. At the end of the day, it's a Z or Z. It's just a backwards too. The MX part of the name began in 1981 with the MX Blizzard, which had one of the first long travel suspensions in snowmobile history. Later in the timeline, 1993 in fact, Skidoo added the Z to the Formula MX to improve its top of the line performance image right alongside the Mach Z. Both these sleds were in the brand new lighter weight F2000 chassis. This part of snowmobile history was my history. I mean, these sleds were my dream rides when the MXZ and Mach Z were brand new on showroom floors, not to mention the Indies and the Zerts and the VMAX 4s. And when those names went away over the years, I may have shed a tear or two, but at least the MXZ, it stuck around. Now, I might take some flack for implying that these machines are somehow vintage or historical, but I didn't grow up with Olympics on the showroom floor either. Anyhow, uh, back to the Z, I mean Z. Our Skidoo ride for the 2020 model year is the 850X package, which we ordered in the spring with the standard 1.25 inch ripsaw track for more speed. We also opted out of the adjustment package, so no pilot skis or QAS on the running boards. What the X package does get us is more adjustment in the rear suspension and spring rates just a little softer than an XRS. The TNT model is stellar and should really be considered the beginning of the lineup over the sport. The TNT has preload adjustable springs only without dampening adjustable shocks. However, the boffins at Skidoo have done a great job making this sled a joy to ride as is. It's precise, predictable, comfy, and good looking. The only reason we opted for the X package was for the additional suspension adjustability and spring rate. I should also say that when really pushing hard on the rough stuff, we could ride through the suspension on the TNT. And comparing it and the X package back to back, you can definitely tell the X will take more abuse. So why not an XRS? Well, we've had those the last two years and honestly, I think they were too much. Great on whooped out trails, but just too harsh everywhere else. We also found the sled sat too high for where and how we rode, so the X package was the best choice for us. And when I say us, I mean me, because this nuclear banana is gonna spend the winter in my trailer. And knowing that I'll be spending a bunch of time on this machine, I will most certainly add a bit of windshield above the gauge pod for more wind chill protection. But other than that, that's the only complaint I have about the MXZX. Everything else falls into place for my riding style with this machine. I mean, I really like the way you can hang off the side in a corner, you can get up on the bars easy when you need to, and then without the QAS on the running boards, I feel I got more room to move my feet around when I want to as well. And then for the occasional deep snow encounter, the inch and a quarter track will do a decent job keeping up forward momentum, especially being motivated by the 850 E-Tech engine. With all the choices in the MXZ line, it all goes back to really figuring out what type of rider you are and making buying decisions based on this rather than on image or simply buying the most expensive sled in the lineup. There is the perfect MXZ with your name on it. You just might have to order it. I guess you could say with all the options available within the MXZ lineup that I've managed to build my perfect dream sled? I don't know, but one thing's for sure that this 2020 MXZ X package will continue to build on the history that started for me in 93 when I was five.